Renaten and Pauline uh, has been working as a duo uh, in Berlin since 2007. So this exhibition actually is celebrating their 15th year uh, of uh, deep collaboration. Uh, they met in Berlin in the underground queer scenes. They started to work together uh, and, and ever since uh, they've been producing really important works on queer paradigms of history, culture, aesthetics, kinship uh, and resistance, uh, which makes them very special also in the field of art in relationship with queer. I first saw their exhibition. Uh, it was called uh, Normal Work uh, and it was in Künstlerhaus Bretagnen in Berlin. It was my first time, first years in Berlin. This exhibition is a very special occasion uh, where you are seeing, you are actually witnessing as audience a kinship being developed. Uh, a kinship being developed also between me and them uh, as artists and curators, but also between uh, them and the institution uh, and the way they trust and the, do, the way they you know, give their work, the way they are generous uh, also as well. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Uh, and we developed, a lot of ideas developed. Uh, we produced also new work uh, for the exhibition, which also happens in a very beautiful way here for the first time in conversation with the work that's produced for Venice Biennale moving backwards for the Swiss Pavilion. The film installations uh, are forming the backbone uh, of, the, of the exhibition. Uh, Renate and Pauline, they both come from film production, from filmic background in a certain way. Their, their main interest is is the filmic work. Uh, so uh, the film is always the beginning point. And I'm telling this because uh, with moving backwards, uh, we have a very particular experiment. Uh, moving backwards is inspired from the uh, guerrilla strategy of uh, the Kurdish militants in the mountains uh, when they use the strategy to move backwards to erase their trace on the mountain so that they cannot be uh, found by the Turkish army. But here, of course, in moving backwards, we are seeing a very particular turnover. So the moving, this moving backwards, this particular guerrilla strategy then meets uh, with an underground queer strategy of being and existing together, um, happening in nightclubs, uh, in the music scenes, uh, in the bars, uh, and uh, then introduces a very particular choreography of togetherness and kinship. They shot the film uh, also in a very particular way for the dancers to meet the camera when they were moving backwards. So dancers also had to move backwards and change their choreogra dancing choreographies accordingly. And when we look at the film, from the beginning to the end, we really actually don't know where the film starts and where the film ends. Uh, we don't know what a point is like the beginning and the end, and if there is a future or if there is a past. Which brings us to the work No Time. They are sister works. So uh, they decided to uh, name the title of the film as, as No Time uh, because it is indeed that, uh, that timeless space that they are building uh, with the dancers exercising various dance styles from different, different times in a very uh, anachronistic uh, way, but always in own conversation, always in a maybe impossible conversation in the real world and bringing also 
strength to us while watching it, bringing joy to us also while watching it. And then at the same time, uh, there are two very strong elements uh, in no time that have never been used, that they have never been part of uh, Renato and Pauline's universe, uh, which are the sliding doors uh, and the shades. In no time we are seeing the sliding doors uh, and the shades, which of course play a lot with the camera shutter, the idea of the camera shutter, who places that camera shutter, who is behind the camera, who is deciding on the frame, uh, who is deciding who is going to appear in the frame. And uh, for here, uh, site specifically in Kadoseme, uh, there is a connection between two videos playing with the play of lights, uh, so the audience, the public is guided also between the films. Uh, and uh, in a way it's an immersive space, it's designed as an immersive space where, uh, where the publics hopefully come in and they lose their sense of time to find a new sense of time, to find a new sense of liberation uh, with the promises uh, of these liberating bodies in the video, in both videos. They are wigs and microphones and chains and uh, some even others that, that we don't really see uh, in the films or like here also installed here, they are uh, very important protagonists of uh, Baudry Laurent's filmic universe. Uh, and yeah, this is the, the way they function and maybe this would also connect us uh, to the bar piece because that also brings then another element uh, inside um, with those uh, settings, set, with the setting of kinship, let's say. So we are at the moment in the second room of uh, Portrait of a Movement. Uh, it's an exhibition inside the exhibition, uh, and it's called the Bar Piece. Bar Piece is first conceptualized as part of 2019 Pavilion uh, Moving Backwards uh, in Venice Biennale. And it, then it actually, whenever the occasion arrives, it is becoming part of the exhibitions or it's becoming recontextualized uh, in different appearances of Baudry Lorenz. Uh, we said how they met was also as part of this queer underground scene. So there is nothing actually more natural than uh, rethinking of the bar space as a space of uh, kinship an abstraction uh, and the idea of the abstraction or the research of abstraction uh, as, a, uh, as a strategy of queer aesthetics has been a long uh, term part of like Baudry Lawrence's uh, work uh, and, uh, and kinship also as we have also spoken inside uh, is one of the hearts of the Baudry Lorenz universe uh, because if you notice uh, the all the team, uh, a lot of like the performers, a lot of like the participants, they're all coming from uh, the same circle. They are the same people, so it is an actually ongoing kinship production that happens also uh, with the with the work. <laughs> 